The New York Yankees visit Fenway Park and the Boston Red Sox here in this commentary with me, Dunbar Snack Bar, playing MLB 2K10, still getting prepared for MLB 2K11. I haven't decided what team I want to be yet. I know I said in my last commentary I wanted to be the Oakland Athletics. That's still up in the air. At the same time, besides playing around with some teams, I also thought I'd go along and I'd play one of the biggest rivalries in baseball and maybe even the biggest rivalries in the history of professional athletics. I am going to be playing as the Boston Red Sox here. I already feel like I'm a little bit in a, of a disadvantage just because for those of you who played baseball, you know, in the virtual respects, you'll know how good of a team that the New York Yankees seems to be year after year after year. And when I'm playing with a team that I'm not too familiar with, I feel like I'm even more at a disadvantage. So I'm a little bit worried about this game. The one thing that I'm happy about here, my pitcher's got the 12-6 curve. My last commentary, you saw how much I love that. Definitely going to be relying on that here with the New York Yankees just because that's a nasty pitch. Starting off with Derek Jeter, though, going to be throwing the changeup. He's going to be swinging and missing. Great way to start off the game with the very first out. You love seeing a strikeout anytime you go up against the New York Yankees. So that was uh, pretty amazing. I'm kind of thinking I might want to be the Red Sox. I'm not sure. They do have a good team. But here you're going to see one of the biggest downsides of being the Red Sox. The big green monster in left field. And that hit had the crack of the bat similar to the one that you get whenever you hit it long. But rather than scoring a run and getting a home run, I just get a double. So kind of disappointed about that. I know I would only have to deal with that half of the season because every other park in the in the MLB does not have that big green monster. But I'd also have uh, this guy, David Ortiz. He's going to be hitting this one in just a little bit. <laughs> Forgot he swung and missed on that one. But here we go. He's going to be swinging here, and he's going to be hitting this up the middle. And he's going to be scoring the man in from second. So it's an early lead for me, one to nothing. Granted, not that big. But anytime you're going up against a team like the Yankees, who you know is better than you statistically and on the side of attributes, getting that early, early lead is a huge thing to do and definitely gets the momentum sway in your favor. I know it's just a video game. Momentum doesn't mean nearly as much, but you got a real person behind the controller. So for me, that was actually pretty huge. On this one, though, going to be going a 5 four, three, double play. Defense has been really, really good for me. I'm surprised I've been able to hold the Yankees to only one hit going uh, into the bottom of the second here, though. Usually they have a lot more. So hopefully I'll be able to retain this uh, defense here. And that's what's really, I think, going to give me the victory over... Uh, the Yankees if I can definitely hold them off. So as mentioned statistically the Yankees are usually the best team in baseball definitely on the batting side of things so if my pitcher can hold them back then I've really destroyed all advantage that they might have over me so like I said 12-6 curve is going to be huge I'm going to try to mix things up but with this ball that drops into left field I'm going to be routing the guy in from home Plows over Jorge Posada for the run. That's big for me. I even got the achievement. Now the thing is, is I really never take a risk like that. I don't really decide to go ahead and plow the catcher just because I figure that the game isn't going to give me too many of those. So I kind of lucked out on here. Uh, thing was, though, I kind of underestimated the arm of the Yankees outfielders on that one. So that's really why I ended up going. But it works out for me in the end. Um, David Ortiz back up here. Last uh, time he was at bat, he got that RBI. So we're going to see if he does it again with this hit in the left center. Left fielder totally misjudges it. Got to go at a different angle. Center fielder ends up getting it. I decide to go home with it. I thought they were going to go with that, but they end up going after David Ortiz, who was trying to go to third. Now, if you've ever seen David Ortiz, you know how big of a guy this is. So that was... I'm not going to lie, that was dumb on my part to send him to third. I wasn't thinking too much, but this guy is huge. He's a monster. So not surprised that he got out. I'm going to have to try and remember that here. But Nick Swisher's up, and Nick Swisher is definitely a threat. He's One of the things they talk about in the game is Nick Swisher is the eighth man in the lineup typically for the Yankees. Ended up with 29 home runs, so that is ridiculous. 
eighth and ninth man in your lineup is really among some of your worst batters. So for him to do that, that definitely tells you a lot about the team. The big 12-6 curve, got, got, him, got him swinging though. That's awesome. I love that 12-6. Now I got people who I'm going up against like A-Rod, Derek Jeter, these guys that you hear about all the time. A lot of the teams I play, you know, I, I know these guys, but they don't have the same intimidation factor as some of these guys. So as I'm pitching up against them, I'm trying to definitely stay in the cold zones. That's that blue area where they're just not as good at. Caught him swinging on the slider there. You know, trying to stop him. Seems to be really working well on the Yankees. And I also made an adjustment myself to go more off of what the catcher is telling me to throw. So as you see on the left-hand side there, you know, what he's uh, calling. Here's a good off-balance throw by my shortstop. I thought that was pretty sweet. I love seeing those athletic fielding things. But on the left-hand side, whenever you see me pitching and whatever they're marking is what I'm going to be throwing. So it'll give you a little bit of a heads up here. Um, but so far, this game's been pretty sweet. I'm still up three to nothing. That last one by David Ortiz was not cool, but I still got the run. I'm in the top of the fifth here, two outs. Things have still been going pretty sweet. The Yankees have the big goose egg on the scoreboard, so doing pretty well. I think I might keep this pitcher in here as, as long as I can. One, because he's got the 12-6, which I love so well. And the other thing is he's doing really well. Like on that one, he's got the two-seam fastball. Catches him swinging on that one. I started off inside, and it had it slowly come into the, the strike zone here. That's definitely been working as well as you know uh, that ball placement here. Seems that with my pitching, it's so accurate that I really don't have to worry about the pitch count draining my guy's stamina, and I really don't have to worry too much about you know how long my guy can go. Uh, I definitely can outplay any pitchers I go up against just because I've got, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I'm pretty good at uh, deciding what's a ball and what's a strike, and I uh, swing a lot at the ones that are in the strike zone here, so I only end up with about maybe one or two strikes, uh, strikeouts a game. Catch him with the changeup looking. That's sweet placement, though. Take a look at that. That's just right there in the corner. But I usually end up with one or two strikeouts a game, so that's pretty awesome. That's usually when my hit count is so high. Going to be a good hit here in the left center. I'm going to try and score the guy in from home. Got cocky one more time, underestimated him again. Tried to take out Jorge Posada, but this time I don't do it. So for me to have two of those in one game is pretty rare. I'm lucky I got the first one. Not surprised this uh, second one didn't work. Because I didn't score anybody, it ended up being a waste. Might as well have just you know, flew out in the, in the outfield there. But nice job by Jorge for uh, holding on to that one. Going to be coming in with a new pitcher, though. Like I said, I think he was his stamina was pretty low just because of uh, how many pitches he'd been throwing and how many I were looking at. But still, so far so good. Bottom of the six. I've been really holding the Yankees to a low amount of hits which is going to be key uh, in this game. Hopefully I can hold on to this lead. Um, right here, though, is going to be, be huge for me. I've got a man on second, definitely in scoring position. Doesn't matter where he was, though. Going to be a big, long hit right there into uh, right center. Shouldn't say it was a big, long hit because this is kind of more of a laser beam. Uh, definitely a straight shot there. Just barely made it over the wall. Doesn't matter how far you hit it. As long as you hit it over. So I got two runs. I am now up five to nothing. I'm definitely going to relax quite a bit. Not worry so much about offensive production. Because if I can get this uh, complete game shutout here for my guy, or just a shutout period, you know, it's going to be something that's uh, definitely worth putting up here for you guys to see. Because anytime you can get that against the Yankees, that's uh, that's definitely good. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing the Yankees. I do have my own personal opinion. But the thing is, is I can't help but respect you know, other people's opinions there. See, there was another one I didn't get defensively. And I'm just coming from a virtual standpoint here. The Yankees are a difficult team to play. So for me to get this you know, kind of production against them is uh, is pretty good. David Ortiz back up. See, here it is again. 
That was a big long hit. Same thing. Should have been a home run anywhere else in Major League Baseball. But it ends up being a double for David Ortiz. So he's sitting there with the fist pump excited. I would be mad. I would be so frustrated if I hit a ball like that and it just ends up being a double. So I think this kind of rules out here that I'm not going to be the Red Sox. Who knows? This is kind of a goofy, goofy play on my part. David Ortiz sending him to third. But he gets caught in the pickle. They're smart and threw it to him because, once again, David Ortiz is super, super slow. But hopefully I can get back with him. What's he doing? Oh, my God. It looks like he's jogging, doesn't he? You fat tumble lard, move. Go to the weight room. Gosh. Take a leisurely stroll. Of course he's going to be out. Another bad move with David Ortiz on my part. So David Ortiz is definitely not getting player of the game. I'm still up five to nothing. So again, not too worried about this here. But here we go, top of the ninth. There's not going to be a bottom of the ninth if uh, I can hold him here within five runs, going for the complete game shutout. So this is going to be huge. Hopefully I can uh, maintain the success of my pitcher here just as I go through it. Starting off with Nate Swisher. I'm going to be going with the uh, two-seam fastball, I believe, right here. Yep. Got him looking. Same thing. Inside, and it just drifted. Drifted right on into the strike zone. So that's awesome. One out. Two outs closer. That complete game shutout, which is always big whenever you're a pitcher. You always want to get something like that. One, you always want to go a complete game. But two, to be able to get the shutout, that's even better. So here we go. I'm going up against uh, Teixeira now. Teixeira has done a really, really good job against me. I think he's got a good chunk of the Yankees hits. Uh, he's got a double and a single off me, if I remember right. So I definitely do not want to see Teixeira up here, so hopefully I can take care of him. I've got the 0-2 count on this one, but going to be throwing the change up. He's going to hit that into right center, and J.D. Drew is just not fast enough to be able to get to that. So I've got Teixeira on second with one out. So I really have to perform defensively here because any kind of hit that uh, goes into the outfield and drops you know in the gap I know to share a slow but that's still going to score him and then there goes my shutout I can just hope for a complete game but Ellsbury is definitely able to get to that one that was uh, a high hit and he had plenty of time to get underneath it one out away from a complete game shutout against the New York Yankees with a team I'm not familiar with this is awesome. So, Teixeira again on second. Just checking him out. He's got a one steal rating. That's the second game in the in a row that I played where a guy has got a one or like a two steal rating. And that just has to be absolutely embarrassing. I mean, I don't know how you would feel if you're the player and you see that. I probably wouldn't play the game anymore. But here I am. 0-2 count on the changeup. That was sweet. 12-6 curve right here. Oh, and he falls. Oh, that was awesome. If you're going to end a game, strike out, not only that, but you embarrass the guy to the point where he falls over. So I get the complete game shutout. That is awesome against the New York Yankees. Definitely a good game. Don't think I'm going to be either of those teams in the franchise, but I just thought I'd play them just because it's a big rivalry. Thank you guys for coming, for taking a look at this. Please feel free to leave me any kind of feedback. Please definitely subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, whatever you guys want to do. I'd love to hear from you, see what you would like. Um, but again, thanks for dropping by, guys. It means a lot. You guys have a good one, and we're going to see you next time, all right?